Hello this is Mark from tradeinformed.com Welcome to this video. An easy way to use Excel to backtest a trading strategy part 2. Okay for those of you who've looked at part 1 we've got exactly the same spreadsheet in front of us and the trading strategies are going to be the same as in part 1. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create two new columns and they're going to be exactly the same columns with our two trading strategies first one of which is buy and hold and the second one is buy when the market closes above the exponential moving average okay the reason I'm creating new two new columns is because I'm presenting the data slightly differently these two new columns are just going to show the trades so I'm going to do this by putting equals this week minus the previous week I'm going to drag that across and then as you'll remember if you've seen part one if we double click on the bottom right hand corner of the cell the formula is copied down to all the cells below okay so we want to compare these two trading strategies and we've got one way of comparing them and that's to look at the closing balance of the account after following both strategies but there are other metrics that we can use and I'm going to go over a few of them today. The first one of these I'm going to calculate is the gross profit. This is the total number of the total amount of profit gained from all the profitable trades. The formula we're going to use is equals sum if I'm going to put in our range, which is the cells that we've just created in this column. I'm going to put in our criteria, which is greater than zero. Okay, there's one other thing that I'm going to do because we're going to use exactly the same number, of the, the same rows in all the subsequent uh, formulas. I'm going to put in a dollar here and another one here, and that will lock these rows for when we copy this cell. Okay, so I can just drag this across here. And we can see that for the buy and hold, the gross profit for all the profitable trades is $695,056. And for the buy above EMA strategy, it's $444,450. Okay, if we're going to calculate the gross profit, we're going to have to also calculate the gross loss. This is the sum of all the losing trades. We're just going to copy down this formula. I'm going to change it very slightly to make it add up all the cells that are less than zero. There we go, we have the gross loss and the difference between the two is what we're going to call the net profit equals sum of these two cells. Okay, so we can see here that the net profit is exactly the same as it is here minus the $1,000 that we started our account. Okay, so we can just copy these across and there we have the equivalent values for the buy and hold and the buy above the exponential moving average. Okay, another thing that we might want to know is the number of winning trades. I'm going to calculate this using a very similar formula but I'm just going to copy this one to start with and instead of sum if, this formula is going to be count if. And if we work out the number of winning trades, it's a good idea to work out the number of losing trades. And for that, I'm going to copy down the formula. And again, I'm going to change it to values less than zero. All these formulas uh, are very easy to use and I'm going to provide a copy of them on the web page of the article associated with this video. Okay, we might want to, to know the percentage of winning trades in a strategy. It's always good to know. So for this one we equals the winning trades divided by the total of winning and losing trades. Let's put that as a percentage. And we can see that the buy and hold is 56% 50, uh, winning trades. 
copy that data across for the strategy two by above the exponential moving average. You can see that strategy strategy is slightly more successful in terms of winning trades at 58%. Another thing that might be interesting to know is the largest profitable trade. Okay, we're going to do that by, again, we're going to use exactly the same cell, so I'm going to copy this one again. The formula we're going to use here is max, which stands for maximum, and returns the largest value in this range. Okay, so our largest profitable trade is $5,471. Fortunately, we need to also find out our largest losing trade. I'm going to use that with the formula instead of max, formula is min. Okay, unfortunately, the largest losing trade is roughly about double the largest profitable trade. Okay, and again we can copy these over for strategy number two. We can see the numbers. Largest profitable trade is slightly lower, but also the largest losing trade is lower. Okay, the next thing I'm going to calculate is the number of years of the trading strategy. I'm going to do this very simply just by adding up the number of winning and losing trades. I'm going to divide it, that's the number of weeks, and we divide that by 52. You see the trading strategy was going for about 63 years, from 1950 to 2013. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in dollars and I copy that across there because of course the trading strategies were going for exactly the same, same number of weeks. Okay the reason I wanted to know the number of years of the trading strategy is it's interesting to find out the average return per year for the strategy. So we're going to do that using the compound interest formula. I'm going to write in as the percentage profit per annum. The formula for this, I'm going to go back to this one here, total at the end, we put in equals, total at the end divided by the start, we put that to the power of 1 divided by number of years trading, we do that as minus 1. So there we can see that the percentage profit per annum, not bad there at all, is 7.3%. In fact, we'll look at this again, 7.27%, almost identical, 7.27% for the buying the index and 7.33% for buying above the exponential moving average. And there we go, we've got two similar strategies but slightly different results on the other metrics. For further information, please visit www.tradeinformed.com.